the Polar Express by Alexei, Brianna, and Kira. In some scenes, the Polar Express had four cars, but in others it had ten. The creators must have really lost track when they made that mistake. We came up with a happy medium of seven. If each weighs 100 tons, which is equivalent to 100,000 kilograms, that means the entire train would have a mass of somewhere around 700,000. If we time how long it takes for the train to go from rest position to its full speed on ice, it proves to be approximately four seconds. V1 of the train would of course be zero meters per second, and we came to a conclusion that after four seconds, the train appears to be moving at close to 14 meters per second, which would be the V2. By multiplying the mass of the train by the acceleration of gravity, which is known to be 9.81 meters per second squared, we can find the normal force. We are using 0.1 as the coefficient of kinetic friction, so from there we can find the force of friction by multiplying the coefficient of friction by the normal force, which equals 686,700 newtons. As for the distance the train took to go from 0 meters per second to 14 meters per second, we can come to a consensus that it looks to be about 8 meters. Now we are going to use the Big Five equation to find the acceleration of the train in those 4 seconds. We're going to use the equation vf squared equals vi squared plus 2 delta x. If we rearrange that to make one side of the equation equal the acceleration, then it will look something like vf squared minus vi squared all over 2 delta x equals the acceleration. Then we can plug our numbers into there and that would look like this. 14 meters per second squared minus 0 meters per second squared all over 2 times 8. We can come to the conclusion that the acceleration is 12.25 meters per second squared. Now using Newton's second law of motion and the equation F equals ma, we can use the mass of the train and the acceleration to find the net force. So, if I multiply 700,000 kilograms by 12.25 meters per second, that gives me a net force of 8 million 575,000 newtons. Since the force diagram for the train would look like this, then it's clear that the force applied would have to be bigger than the force of friction, so that would make the equation F net equals FA minus FF, rearranged to be F net plus FF equals FA, to solve for the applied force. On a new train of thought, to put into perspective Apollo 11, a high-powered rocket that was the first to carry humans to the moon, needed an applied force of 33,400,000 newtons to propel it from Earth to sky. It is impossible that a train could need an applied force that is nearly a third of that of an enormous rocket that blasts fire from its rear end to send it upwards into outer space. And thus, all of this was to prove how unrealistic it is for a train, even as magical as the Polar Express, to accelerate at a rate of 12.25 meters per second. What a train wreck!